After eons of tyranny, the demon god Adir was finally overthrown by humanity. Though fear of his terrible power endured. And so was formed the hallowed Sentinels, our duty being to stand vigil for signs of his return. Even exile to another realm could not silence the fallen god forever. And in time, Adir's malignant influence pervaded the world once more. In his hunger for vengeance, Adir orchestrated the return of his demonic army. Light was swallowed by shadow. And with it, hope. A new, grim champion arises. The Dark Crusader. And perhaps it will indeed come to pass that only they who shun the light in order to fight the darkness possess the power to defy a god. Forgive me, and steer this weapon of deliverance to a worthier servant than I. Latest receiver of his grace. Great potential dwells within you, doubtless, for you to be chosen thusly. And so does Aureus' wisdom guide my hand in the bestowment of this subsequent boon. Your 
our flesh has been made sacrosanct with the mark of the Dark Crusaders. Prove yourself worthy of this gift. Seek me in the bowels of the bridge. Our work is of the greatest import.
I always wondered if there were others. You're probably thinking that lamp's just a tool to be used as you see fit. Take it lightly, and you'll find it's the other way around. Mark my words. I don't know who you are, and I don't care. But since it seems a deer has you marked, making you a bigger threat to the rogue ourselves is both. I've defied the wills of gods and kings. If you know any kind of freedom, you'll do the same. Check. Your radiance grant me the strength to continue to endure these dark days. To lay bare the path to salvation for my wayward brothers and sisters. So we may walk it together and to strike down all those who would see our will defied. Even as our suffering continued, I honored my pledge of patience to the Exactor. And yet you now appear before me, a stranger, bearing what was not yours to receive. A betrayal made flesh, and one I cannot brook.
brothers and sisters, you honor us and all who came before you with your sacrifices. While I wish they were unnecessary, my wishes will not ease your suffering, but I pray my sorcery does. Welcome, Dark Crusader. I had no doubt in my assessment of you, as one worthy of the monumental task which lies before us, Crusader. My name is Dunmire, and I am an exactor of the Dark Crusaders, the holy order of which you are now an honored member. The Church of Orion Radiance has assigned to me the duty of purging Mornstead of its Rogar blight and ensuring the ancient tyrant Adir knows no liberation from his enduring imprisonment. While the schism between the Church and Judge Cleric is of long standing, she and her hallowed sentinels, now perverted, did at least construct Mornstead's radiant beacons, which have prevented Adir's return for centuries. But now, we stand corrupted and on the verge of collapse. It is to these five beacons you must turn your eye. Use the Umbral Lamp to cleanse them of Adir's destructive influence, and deliver salvation to a world on the brink of perdition. Rogar and Hallowed Sentinel alike will offer you no quarter, so remember, Though Aureus' mercy is without limit, yours should not be. By Aureus' divine will, I live again. It's a miracle. And to think I raised my sword to you, when all along you were a divine instrument sent by him to deliver my death and rebirth and bring clarity. Forgive me, Lantbearer. I'm Pieta of the Hallowed Sentinels. And as Aureus sustains me, so too will I sustain you. Whether by making manifest your potential or through my healing blood, contained within the Sanguinarix you carry. Should you find any saintly quintessences, bring them to me, and they can bolster the power of my blood further still. The beacons must be cleansed, the Hallowed Sentinels restored, and Adir's malignancy eradicated. Through whatever is to come, fellow chosen of Aureus, we stand together in service of him. Our holy work continues, Lampbearer. Fellow sanctified vessel, may Aureus' divine radiance flow through you and into you. Our holy work continues, Lampbearer. Let Aureus's will be done. The beacons must be cleansed, the hallowed sentinels restored, and Adir's malignancy eradicated. Through whatever is to come, fellow chosen of Aureus, we stand together in service of him. So the Exactors found himself a new instrument, as Exactors are wont to do. And given that lamp was intended for me, should his paladin fall. And yet now here you are, Lamp Bearer. Well, 
It seems I was right to doubt the value of a dark crusader's work. I'm Stoneman, captain of the Fidelis, a group of good men and women who've made a stand against the madness which has possessed the rest of the hallowed sentinels. We made a vow to restore our order to its former glory, whatever the cost to ourselves. And by Judge Cleric's grace, we'll honor that vow. That heretical umbral lamp and the Dark Crusaders are necessary evils in these dire times, as are you, it would seem. Perhaps our aims will align further, or perhaps not. Look at you, a Dark Crusader, a lamp bearer, and a revenant to boot. Aren't you the multifaceted one? Well, we Fidelis aren't as fortunate. We tend to stay dead when we die. And Aurius knows enough of us have done just that. Anyway, like Nathaniel says, you keep looking back, you don't see the blade coming at your front. We set ourselves a task and we have to finish it. Best watch a step out there. Mornstead is a land awash in blood, both deserved and undeserved alike. That lamp you've got there is heresy, stranger. But then, seems it's getting harder to tell what is and what ain't nowadays. Ah, <laughs> oh, strange times. But in the end, there's right and there's wrong. And that never changes. And I hope for both our sakes you know the difference. But if in doubt, you heed the captain. He's never steered me wrong, much as he might think otherwise. While the beacon should remain your most pressing task, I would have you perform another for me concurrently. Seek out and return to me the items which stand as proof of the hallowed sentinel's heretical deviations and practices. For only in the study of such can we hope to turn them towards the true light of Aureus. This land is overflowing with sin, so I expect this undertaking to offer you little difficulty. Also, say nothing of this to Pietà or the Fidelis Captain. They are already conflicted. Troubling them further only endangers them and our mission. Ah, that's it, isn't it? Oh, the lamp of immortality. And the genuine article. Not a useless empty vessel like the one I saw that witless fool bumbling around with. I've learned a little since coming to Mornstead about that lamp and the awful mission to which it's attached. I hope you recognize that frightful burden for what it is. In truth, what's been done to you is downright cruel. Of course, some people are born into roles of tremendous responsibility. My name is Andreas of Ebb, esteemed scion of nobility, but far more than that, descendant of the great ruler Andanas himself as proven by my family's book of lineage, for one. That's right. Through my veins flows the blood of the legendary hero who defied Adir and the Rogar and saved the whole world, only to be betrayed and murdered by a common criminal. So you'll understand the men of my pedigree cannot simply stand idle while an unfortunate victim such as yourself remains shackled to such a grim fate. Give me the lamp. And let me shoulder your burden, friend. What say you? No? It saddens me to see you bring such agony down upon your own head. I hope you see sense and reconsider. My offer stands as long as necessary. After all, what man of breeding would turn away from one so clearly in need? Careful! If you're headed for Pilgrim's Perch, friend, uh, the hallowed sentinels don't welcome everyone. Not even a faithful pilgrim who's crossed countless miles of land and sea to join them. All I wanted was to serve the divine judge cleric, but they deemed me unworthy and chased me off. What's a poor, rejected disciple to do now, I ask you?
Most blessed representatives of the Holy Judge Clary. My soul soars to the Holy Judge's home, a pilgrim. And on your feet, you look at the sacred ground. And we are yet to see whether you are deserving of that honor. I assure you, I have dedicated my life to the teachings of Judge Cleric. My faith in her and her divine works is boundless. Pray it is, for our Immaculate Lady's light will lay bare the truth. And in radiance, there is judgment. Cleric's welcome comes behind the edge of a sentinel's blade. More often than not in this place. Makes me curious how you're still breathing. I suppose dangling the promise of salvation from one hand and the threat of death from the other keeps a pilgrim obedient. <laughs> oh, on second look, you're not just another deluded lamb. You know, not long ago, I saw a dark crusader carrying that same lamp. Now it's in your hands. Again, curious. I know they'd see you rejuvenate those obscene monuments preventing a deer's return. Don't. That's a threat. But also advice. A deer rewards the faithful. Witness this offering I make to you. While even the handling of such items is objectionable, all facets of this heterodoxy must be exposed. Another lamb bearer. Aye. So it goes. Should you end up one of the few to earn a vestige, I'll tend to it, as I do. For whatever it's worth. And until I'm on the ground myself. Aren't you a credit to your species? <laughs> the lamp must 
must be born until the favored child makes themselves known. Only then can the remaining carrion of creation finally return to the void. to shadowed halls of the past. Their delight's now yours to indulge in, bearer of the lamp. Ah, you again. Gerinda found herself a place to do a little business. She hasn't seen any other Korok since arriving in this shithole kingdom. But, Korok or human, sturdy armor and lethal weapons are a universal language. Speaking of business, Gelinde has something you might be able to help with. She's looking for some items. This vining bag of bones left in Mornstead a long time ago. Galinda is undeserving of what she seeks, traveler. And self-centered besides, you will do well not to aid her in. You know full well the agony Galinda can inflict on you as long as you bear those manacles, Sparky. My name is not... Silence! <laughs> Annoying as he is, Sparky does possess certain very rare knowledge, which he refuses to share. But he carves his knowledge in crystal, and now Gerlinda wants those crystal tablets to help in her wounds missing. So, if you find any in your travels, bring them to Gerlinda, and she'll do right by you. As I would not to Gerlinda, will not reveal the locations of the tablets to you, Trevor. Even upon pain of death.
gone to all his... My child. Yes. Enter my embrace. Oh, oh may your flesh sustain my divinity. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Onwards you march, eh? I hope it's not for any kind of glory, because you won't find a sniff of that in Mornstead. And certainly I hope it's not in the name of the hallowed sentinels, because take my word for it, they're no better than the Rogar. I've got many a scar to prove it. Whether you've embraced Umbral or struggle against it is none of my concern. Power is a sweet temptation, and the Lamb will grant you that, sure enough. But don't confuse that with loyalty. Still, I'll not deny. I owe Umbro for giving me what it did. So the vestiges will be minded as long as I'm able. Name's Byron, by the way. I'll be around. Always am. Continue to shine as the radiant paragon you are in life, and may your dedication to our cause be remembered evermore.
friend. Do you want to play? I know some fun games. Are you hungry? What do you eat? Hmm. You're smelly. Maybe I should give you a bath. Several of our sacred texts tell of Saint Latimer, a noble knight and most devout follower of Our Lady, canonized after he sacrificed himself to help show the hallowed sentinels what was necessary for the greater good. Many have given their lives to sustain the beacons, but Latimer was the first and remains one of our most venerated figures. Our holy work continues, Lamp Bearer. Let Arius's will be done. There is a point at which pride and purpose become self-destruction and delusion, friend. But if you insist on continuing to punish yourself, then I suggest you venture into the woods. Unnaturally frozen and home to terrors they may be, but they also contain one of the beacons to which you've dedicated yourself. And who knows what other treasures might be found there beneath the snow and ice. Mornstead may be little but a blood-soaked ruin at this point. The truth is that the rest of the world isn't far behind on the same path, even without the help of those grotesque Rogar. Our world is more conflicted than ever, with men of all stations, nations, and creeds and odds. They need someone to unite them and lead them where they all tear each other apart like dogs. You look tired, friend. Haven't you already suffered enough? dead already. If anything, I'm merely helping you to your well-earned rest. While well, helping yourself to your rest. In the name of Horus. Gods! 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 That's all you people talk about. Horus this and Adir that. You have no vision, no ambition. Just so desperate to be ruled. Well, despite what so many think, we have never needed gods to guide humanity. Only the right man for the task. Who are you? The future you won't live to see.
Hello, Lampy. A nice man with a little moustache told me he saw the baddies taking Melchior towards the castle, and this was how to get there. And look, I found the helmet. The head that we're in, it fell right out, and it fit perfect. That's a good sign, that is. Melchior said Mornstead were going to be the answer to all our problems. I don't know what problems we had, but Melchior knows best. Yes, she does. He'll sort everything out when I find him. Mm. Blimey, ain't half warm round here, though. The inserts and the fools are getting sleepy. Isn't that right, pal? See? Ooh, that is the spot. I feel like I could run a million billion miles. No monster better get in my way or it'll be <clears throat> for them. Look out, baddies. Melchior, here I come. Elian, you can't just run off like this. You had everyone at the orphanage worried sick. I know it's not easy, but it can be a frightening place at times, so I want to give you something very special I've had since I was a little girl. When I used to get scared, I'd hold it very, very tightly, and that's when it would reveal its magic to me. And I'd know there was no need to be afraid. So the next time you get scared, I want you to be a brave girl and do the same thing. Understand, there's nothing to be afraid of, Elian. I promise. on the horizon. Perhaps that's what will fill the holes in the world. I'll dance in its wake, pluck it from the air and bring it home. It's not so far away. Not so far at all. Ha! 
Honored nobles and fellow visionaries, you placed your trust in me. And did I not deliver on all of my promises? Your coffers overturned. Your infancy never Every little desire and indulgence are fulfilled. As you deserve, as it should be. And while there are those who look upon us with contempt, who call us decadent, callous, depraved, these are merely the ignorant and envious whiners. No! And what you have achieved so far, thanks to my guidance, well, that is merely the beginning. where Katrin fell. She was a lamp bearer like you. But far more than that, she was... my love. I left a token here, and her memory. A pendant I gave her a long time ago, and now it's gone! It's all I have left! Katrin and I were both hallowed sentinels. It's hard to imagine now. She was... astounding. We fell in love, and we embraced what we had, even though the Order forbids it. They found out and made sure we paid for our sin with agony. In the end, they thought we were dead. But it was only Katrin's heart stopped, and not for long, thanks to the Umbral Lamp. But even as a lamp bearer, eventually there came a day when she fell, and didn't rise again. I'll find the bastard who took that pendant. You find them first, you tell me, understand? There'll be blood for this desecration. Trouble yourself. I've got it back. Found the little monster myself, skulking in the dark with a horde of stolen trinkets. Dashed its brains out before it even knew I was there. It'll not be doing any more pilfering. To think, I almost lost my love's pendant. I never should have let it out of my sight in the first place. I'll not make that mistake again. And the blood'll wash off easy enough. I've been thinking. Maybe this was a sign from Katrin. A warning to never falter in the task I've set myself. Or to think beyond the only thing that matters. Honoring her memory. And tending to the vestiges. You be on your way, Lambearer. Don't worry about me. 
Until the day I can finally be with my love again. This is where I belong. Vengeance cretins! Do you really think you can do this to me? I'm the real power at the heart of this kingdom, not the royals, or you, or your imaginary sun god, or anyone else! Bornstead rises and falls with me. And if you think I'll allow you to cast me into one of your damn fires, then you're even more insane than I thought! This is your last chance. If you know what's good for you, free me. Now! This was it. The moment I handed over the rune of the deer and damned this entire kingdom for generations to come. I was tired, angry. I was never a man of faith. But I thought better to entrust the rune to than a judge and look around at what that decision cost. What good was the cleric if she couldn't destroy the rune or prevent all this from other? It's always the same story with gods or those like them. They pretend otherwise. And they're just as weak and flawed as those they lord over. But it's my own damn fault for relying on someone else in the first place. Even when I try to do the right thing, this is always how it ends. You know who I am, so if I tell you that any conversations or dealings we may have are not to be spoken of to anyone, can I trust you understand the consequences should you choose otherwise? Good. Now, I know who you are as well, and I know you're a man experienced in acquiring items of an illicit nature, a practice I'm willing to overlook. Should you put it to use for me, tell me. What do you know of Rogar artifacts? Please! Wait! Look! I've a fortune in coin and jewels right here in my hands. It's all your room, take it! And I can get you more! A lot more! Just please! Don't! Ah! sustain me in these most desperate of days and in the darkness through which I fight 
for it seems to encroach ever closer. I, I fear the weight of this profane work will crush me. Or worse. As ever, I turn to you in my moment of doubt, and will endeavor to remember that this role which perturbs me so is merely a necessity in the performance of your will. And in that, I vow to be resolute. Please continue to hold my brother Samuel in your radiant embrace forevermore. In light we walk. Sometimes I envy you and your woods, York. A blessed peace. Perhaps I'll just damn the whole mess, toss my crown into the gorge, and live out here as a hermit. You'd find me a wise and fair ruler. Well, you learned it from me, after all. But you'd never abandon your throne, or your wife. You're right. Of course, or my child. You're going to be a father. Congratulations to you and Sophesi. King York the First has a certain ring to it, don't you think? <laughs> I'll bear that in mind.
rune of a deer is close. I can taste it. Like blood in my mouth. They all want me to give in to despair. But that's for the weak. The rune is mine. Always has been. And I'm going to take it back. Let the gods bestow their grace on anyone who tries to stop me. Like these fools. There's no salvation here. No redemption. Not for anyone. Let Moonstead and every meaningless life in it burn. There's no salvation. Let Moonstead... Look, you men! at the wickedness which can take root within the walls of our own house if we falter in our vigilance, our rigorousness for even the briefest moment. See how malevolence and greed and weakness can twist the souls of those who once swore a solemn oath and then turn them away from the lights of our eternal lady, where they skulk and plot in shadow, waiting until they can enact their most foul betrayals. But above all else, heed what will be the fate of all traitors who submit to sin. I suppose we should get back, before someone catches on. How can time pass so quickly, eh? I know. Before you go, I've got you something. A pendant? Byron, it's beautiful. I know you can't actually wear it in case someone sees it. But still, I'll take joy in knowing you have it. At least. As long as you like it, of course. Like I said, it's beautiful. Thank you. Now I feel bad for not bringing you something. You are all I'll ever need, Captain. I love you. I love you too. Defile this sacred place with this horror. With your very own hands. Monster, does your blasphemy know no bounds? <laughs> if only it were that easy. 
Brother, we have a guest. Another sinner. So satisfying when you're on the receiving end. Now you will know darkness, brother. Be quiet! But you're only embarrassing yourself. Like some talentless child mummer. They don't respect you or fear you, no matter what you do to them. <laughs> they all see clearly through your pathetic facade to the powerless, hypocritical Coward, you truly are. Enough! Shh. So 
sweet brother. <laughs> you should get some rest. <laughs> So you still live, after a fashion, Revenant. This threshold will mean nothing to you, yet it was once forbidden for any man to set foot on the grounds of the Abbey. Just one of the many edicts to crumble when the Order's collapse. Still, I hesitate to trespass. But our Immaculate Lady waits beyond. So trespass I must. Judge Cleric cannot know what's become of her hallowed sentinels, or the land we were sworn to protect. She would never allow such atrocities to be committed in her name. I just need an audience with her. When she knows the truth, she'll purify the Order, and the Rogar can finally be driven from this holy soil. Pietar is certain of your role as a servant of Aureus' will. I've yet to see enough to believe that. But I'll admit, there's time yet. And any descrier of the dawn found trespassing will be severely punished for their transgression. This place is now sanctified in the name of Judge Cleric, and no longer a sanctuary for the ignorant and misguided. Please. This has been our own for generations. We've always kept our hearts open to the old sentinels. Be grateful that by Judge Cleric's mercy, you are allowed to leave with those wayward hearts still beating. Repent, and turn to her for salvation. This tree grew from a seed into what you see now in a single day. One of Judge Cleric's miracles to edify her disciples. There once hung from it an ancient banner carried into battle long ago by Our Lady herself. A symbol of more virtuous times. And one torn down and disgraced since. Lampbearer, if you should find the pieces of the banner during your journey, bring them to me. 
I'll mend what's been broken, carry it with me into the heart of the Empyrean and present it to Judge Cleric as a reminder of what the hallowed Sentinels once were. And as I willingly relinquish the spirit of my past life, so too do I relinquish my past in time. For I have been reborn in the light of our eternal lady and proven myself worthy of being counted amongst the rest. Just remember, in the end, you're better off alone. Judge Cleric on a matter of the utmost urgency. Please, stand aside. Our Immaculate Lady does not wish to be disturbed, Pieta. This sickness, this corruption spreading across the kingdom is out of control, and our efforts to cleanse it have devolved into callous butchery. People, including our own brothers and sisters, are suffering and dying. We speak for Judge Cleric, Pieta. Should she have need of you, you will be summoned. As for those who fall victim to the corruption, perhaps they are merely proving their souls to be undeserving of salvation. After all... Choice. As you bless these flowers with your radiance and help them flourish, so too bless me, so I may help all of my loyal brothers and sisters flourish and continue to prove myself worthy of their faith. This land has known much darkness, but together, with hope and devotion in our hearts, we will not only stand ever vigilant in its defense, but guide its ascent into your loving light. than any. 
you one. I've tried for so long and in so many ways to make these people see that what I do is what's best not just for this kingdom, but the whole world. I know Adir and the Rogar better than anyone. And they have the temerity to question me, to condemn my actions. I wonder what you'd say to me now if you could. I miss your wise counsel. But your presence still brings me strength, and that's what I need now. The strength to do what must be done. I will protect them, even if it has to be from themselves. child, you will know peace. your soul with holy fire for this profanation.
your cubs, Vermingard. The Abbey is the only home I've ever known besides the Orphanage. It pains me to see it now. As it does to see my afflicted brothers and sisters who roam its halls and courts. But I take comfort in knowing that salvation is finally at hand for all. Except those who instigated this corruption. Our holy work continues, Lampbearer. Let Arius's will be done. You, with all the assistance I've given you so far, it's time you return the favor and do something for me. I was minding my own business up above when I was attacked by some barbarian with a hammer, more animal than man. He fled when he saw he was no match for me, but only now do I realize I must have dropped my book of lineage during the fight. I won't have proof of my birthright lying disrespected in the dirt somewhere. Find it and bring it back to me. Come on, get to it! Bring me that book! than that if you want this lamp, coward. Keep your distance! I warn you! Ha! There it is! Mm, these fresh scuffs. Were they caused by your carelessness? Well, you performed the task required of you, so... I suppose I can overlook it. In fact, to show the extent of my gratitude, I'd be glad to fight alongside you at some point during your travels. It's the least I can do. Hmm? Having a decorated swordsman like Andreas of Ebb at your side is no small privilege, friend. Treasure it. Having a decorated swordsman like
How much debt is on my knees? I return! Your life is nothing. to sleep so soundly. It soothes him having you near, and I know how exhausted you are. This sickness... Can wait. The situation with those fanatics is precarious, and every day it seems the knife's edge on which Mornstead rests becomes thinner. I won't allow my weakness to be the ruination of my kingdom. It's not weakness, Bramus. You know that. My love. Now, let us just enjoy the
have been deceived and enslaved by forces who regard you as nothing more than an instrument through which they might enact their blasphemous will and prevent my rightful return. They speak of light while offering you nothing but blindness. Weak hypocrites relying on the malignant power of Umbral. With one breath, then decrying it with another. They brand me evil, a tyrant, and yet I offer you something they will not. A choice. Reject the fanatical crusaders and the deranged servants of the self-proclaimed judge. Dismiss all of their false dogma and the torturous mission to which they have bound you. And only then will you know freedom. And if you would hear it, the truth. They were capable of guiding the 
themselves, but have been sorely mistaken. Mankind needs me now more than ever. Will and prevent my rightful return. <laughs> <laughs> 